face and start kicking ass, just like it said at the beginning of the program. Man of the hour, tower of power, too sweet to sour. Sending your ass on the jabroni jet to the other side of the territory, brother. The Alabama Hammer. Nightmares on the best part of my day. The goods from the wood. Hot damn. Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. My name is Rivers Langley, and uh, we have a very special crime-focused episode uh, coming up of the Goods from the Woods in just a moment here. Uh, we got an extra-large issue of the Disgraceland Picayune, which uh, arrived on our doorstep, and uh, so we're going to be hearing about that in just a moment. Uh, and We've got a great guest for that episode, uh, my buddy uh, Carter Glasscock, who just moved here from Tennessee, and uh, well, strangely, I actually have him uh, right here, too. Hello. Hello, everybody. How are you, Rivers? I'm Carter Glasscock. And uh, we are actually in a car outside of a Walgreens pharmacy in we are. North Hollyweird. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we just did a uh, mic at a uh, place called The Good Night. Very uh, fun. Which Very is fun mic. run by a friend of the show uh, f- uh, from our Playing Hooky episode. Uh, Joe Kay is the, uh, the host of that mic. And uh, afterwards, uh, we were uh, sort of accosted by a... Uh, Sort of a, a a killer hippie man. Yeah, just like one of those like uh, drunk guys who he lo- he's, he's a real spread head, you know. Lo- yeah. Loves widespread panic, you can tell, and For probably sure. got a couple of DUIs racked up there and uh, outstanding warrants in the state of probably Colorado. Mm-hmm. He stuck around for the show, and he he liked our little stand-up yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said you specifically, your little stand-up. It was great. I was like, wow, yeah. what a I was like, Dude. demeaning shithead. He he seemed very drunk and like at at, at any moment he was going to snap, and uh, so he, we had to listen to some story. He was like, "All right, tell me tell me if this is funny." All right, so uh, there's this thing where uh, so I got this friend. She wanted uh, like balls, just like an extra thing of balls, fake and, ball. Or I don't even know if he said fake balls. We were trying to be like, "What kind of balls?" Yeah. And he was like, "No, I'm just trying to make a joke." And we're like, "Well, it's it's funny. You're with exposition. What sure? What, what were the circumstances around?" <laughs> The purchase and uh, and and uh, uh, acquirement of said testicles. You, you were taking him down the path of like how to write it out, how to actually write the joke. Yeah, I was like, I I I, I got nothing. For yeah. <laughs> well, I kept suggesting because the 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 punchline, if you could call it that, is he's like, oh, the uh, you know she ordered these balls, but the balls never came. Uh, it's a wordplay. Oh, came right. Like, I see. Yeah, like you, like you squirt there. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and you know, and I was trying to explain to him. I'm like, well, that's the obvious thing. The wordplay is anybody can do that. You should dispense with the wordplay in the setup of the joke. You know, in the setup of the joke, you should be like, hey, you know, uh, you know, I could say the balls never came, but I'm not going to say that because I have to say this, and then you go on to write the rest of the joke. And, and then that it, that demonstrates your mastery of the arts. And, and then, he, then halfway through that, he was like, "Yeah, fucking whatever, man. I'm just saying, like, fucking, I'm a funny fucking guy, and like, fucking, <laughs> you know, just fucking, yeah, it's, it's came, like, you know, balls came, man, whatever, dude. I figure as a funny guy, y'all get that, man." He also went on a, a diatribe um, before you came outside about uh, gay people. Before I came. Yeah. yeah. Before you came. Before yeah. I came. Uh, he he was talking about how uh, uh, gay people are good uh, wingmen for him. Okay. Uh, so he's, you know. Dude, it's just like living in my own episode of Queer Eye, like, every day. I just have a phalanx of gay guys that follow me around, man. I truly, truly hope I never see him again. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh... It's, it, there, there's a certain type, and you definitely see this in the South, and you definitely see this in in places like Colorado, places like California, where you've got your your crunchy communities, and you know hippies. I think stereotypically are known as very peaceful people, but there is like a brand of evil hippie, mm. of just people who are just like, dude. I mean, like. I wouldn't necessarily say that to him, but if you said it to me, I would break his fucking face with my fucking face. <laughs> like, they just have this, like, crazy, like, violence just stewing right under the it, surface, and it's scarier than... It's uh, way scarier than just, like, an abrasive, like, drunk at a bar. Like, that yeah. that kind of, like, dude... Oh, I'll not- go back to fucking jail, dude. Like, I don't give a fuck, right, man. Right. Dude. Like, I was on heroin for, like, fucking, like, 15 <laughs> years, bro. Like, I'm on edge, I dude. cashed out my mom. Mom's 401k, and then I fucking burned her house down and stole the money. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, Bra? Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, Jesus, guy. 
Oh, boy. I would so much rather you just be like, what? Like, he, just that, like, hairline redneck <laughs> bar thing is so much, like, less scary to me than a guy who's just like, he's like, yeah, man, like, I've experienced ego death a thousand times. I've explored other worlds, and I've determined that uh, there's no God, nothing to live for, and I will steal everything from you and hurt you physically to attain what I want, man. Oh, like, and I, he, <laughs> <laughs> like psychedelics reveal to them that, like, nothing, that they became just, like, yeah, stark worse. nihilists. It got worse. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They're like, <laughs> when someone's going, like, on a thing like that, you can't even, like, like do like the thing where like one of your eyes goes dead just to it as to imply that like their <laughs> their like whole <laughs> viewpoint is like making you feel comatose. But, yeah. Like if you do that for a while and then they just keep going, it's like okay, fix that eye because that that's yeah. a good way to get punched. It's, it's like, like uh, dude, I saw a guy look like that. You know, right before I uh, threw him out of my moving car, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the matter? Am I boring you, bro? Am I oh, boring you, dude? I'm sorry. I'm not afraid to go back, dude. Like I don't. I fucking. <laughs> you cannot walk on the streets of Cali without being strapped, dude. I'm sorry. You cannot be. You got to be strapped, dude. Then he shows you the gun. It's like, and the safety is well. It's on now. But I mean, like you know. Yeah. Yeah. Have, have you listened to the podcast Up and Vanished? Uh, no. It's a true crime podcast. They've done two seasons. The first season is in like a small town in Georgia, and it's got all your classic characters of like the local sheriff where it's just like, I mean, I don't know where that girl went, you know? I mean, she could be anywhere. That right. kind of thing. And it's got that like kind of sinister Southern Gothic edge to it. The second season is in like a rural hippie town in Colorado, like mm. a town that's been completely taken over by hippies. And this girl disappeared from a drum circle ah. and they're trying to find her. And it's all the entire podcast is just people like that, where it's just like, dude, I mean, look, there's a lot of fucking mine shafts up here, man. Like, I don't, you know, <laughs> like people go missing all the fucking time, bro. And it's not my fucking responsibility that like people I keep hanging out with keep going missing. Like, <laughs> and it's all evil hippies. And it's so funny. Cause that is, that is essentially like the two poles uh, of my life. Of just like sinister rednecks and evil hippies, yeah. sort of, you know, and, and sometimes they're the same, you know, sometimes the, those worlds coexist. Uh, sometimes the Venn diagram is a widespread panic concert. Oh, yeah, that's where you find like the mixture, you know, like the dude's like, yeah, like, bro, I don't, I don't even understand why you're coming at me like this way, dude. For oh, real. yeah, yeah. The, so, the first person I ever knew who like smoked crack. Uh, had a, a <laughs> but not the last. A, no, not not the last. But I mean, you know, when I was in high school, there there was a there was a guy like an older dude. I think he had graduated high school. Certainly wasn't in college, but he was like a crackhead and a Republican. Like had one of those Bush Cheney Ranch wow. Team stickers Pre on the back of his truck. It's a and premium I'm like, you blend. You smoke crack and live off your parents. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do shit. Like oh yeah. Yeah, so I knew a bunch of kids like that in high school, where it was just like like thrill seekers, but they lived in like the suburbs, and you know, yeah, it's it, just very weird. They have like you know war stories and stuff, and like uh, you get one of their eyebrows shaved off or something crazy <laughs> like that. And, like, they're they're, they're well, I was nuts. trying to get like three Adidas stripes in there, like vanilla ice, man, but yeah. then the whole thing I, I used the wrong trimmer setting, and it just took the whole thing off. I was trying to fucking Braden was supposed to hold it steady. <laughs> <laughs> I was so, trying to get Fish Taco to line me up, and he totally <laughs> fucked my head up, dude. He fucked my head up with with that Molly and also with his fucking trim job. Dude, Cody and Brayden were witnesses to a fucking massacre on my face, and that was the loss of my eyebrow. It was a true crime against humanity, dude. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no one's heard from Braden, and I don't fucking know where he went. All right, there's a lot of fucking mine shafts up here, and it's not my problem. <laughs> I am I Braden's keeper? No, <laughs> no, I, I am not. I think that guy was stoked about karaoke after the mic. What do you think he's singing? Oh, oh God. Uh, I, see, it's a question of what would be what would be to his taste, but then what is realistically available? It's Californication. I think I think he's singing oh, Californication. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, that's so, that's actually. Yeah, probably that. Yeah. Or maybe a scar tissue in there. Yeah. Or possibly, and this is the, you know, kind of the ultimate out here, especially, uh, it might get a uh, wrong way or uh, Santeria type situation. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. What if he gets real deep on it and gets like Anima by Tool or something? Ooh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's something like that. Yeah. Like Danny Carey, dude. I'm sorry, man. You can go to church, you can do whatever you want, man, but that, that motherfucker plays polyrhythms, dude. Straight polyrhythms. <laughs> dude, have you heard... 
fucking Michael Kang play that mandolin solo on their cover of Aerosmith's Walk This Way. <laughs> it's fucking transcendent, okay? <laughs> no, I don't know where Sneaky Pete fucking went, man. I haven't seen him since Sunday, April the 15th. Dude, my favorite widespread song has got to be Superstition. <laughs> like, who comes up with shit like that? I just think they do it a little bit better, okay, than Marvin Gaye, you know? <laughs> Is it Marvin Gaye? That's what it said when I downloaded it from Kaza. <laughs> yeah, he's still on LimeWire. Like yeah, the only on guy LimeWire. left on LimeWire. It's like, dude, I listen to Marvin Gaye. I listen to, uh, you know, the that Bob Marley uh, uh, cover of the Fish song. That was crazy. How he lived long <laughs> enough to cover Fish. <laughs> he's got vibes. He's a vibe specialist, as is, as <laughs> it says on uh, LinkedIn. <laughs> oh my God. Man, that guy, that guy is is uh, is like right in the chorus part of Under the Bridge right now. At that <laughs> character, he's doing like both parts. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, like the, Under the Bridge, no, no. He's like doing that part, and they're like, this, yeah, I do some bitch. <laughs> he's got like a shockingly accurate Anthony Kiedis impression. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I, I uh, tend to go on Amazon and just look for things that that pique my interest. And I got a book this week called. Alabama scoundrels, Ooh. Uh, outlaws, Al- pirates, bandits, and bushwhackers. And bushwhackers uh, by uh, Kelly Kazik and Will Elric, and it's just mm. a collection of stories about uh, various pirates and uh, uh, you know ne'er near do wells of the late 1800s in uh, in the mm. state that Carter and I both hail from. That's right, roll tide. Yeah, War Eagle, and uh, especially this week to the to <laughs> Auburn. Hey, I'm interested in basketball for the first time ever. All right, uh, yeah. But uh, this whole book just has a you know collection of all these stories from the late 1800s, which is really like my favorite time period because just basically not entirely unlike the evil hippie thing. Everybody like realized it's, it's the first time that like rampant capitalism just was openly fucking people. Mm. And a lot of people just made the very correct assessment that it's like, what is it? why do I have to follow a law? These guys right. don't follow laws. Fuck it. And that's where you get this first like real explosion of uh, railroad crime, uh, which is what I'm going to talk about here in just a second. This is a guy that uh, I just read about really for the first time in this Alabama scoundrel book. Kind of did my research there. I found another book that I checked out of the Pasadena Library. The Life and Crimes Railroad Bill, Legendary African American Desperado. Ooh. And uh, so, yeah, this was a this was a story that I just thought was very cool and something to put at the beginning of a podcast that's all about crime because I don't know where else this is go. And the era of train robbers. The era of train robbers, and really the last era of of magic in a way. Um, so, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna uh, they utilize magic in these train robberies. Kind of, yeah, a little bit uh, potentially. So. Uh, <laughs> In the 1890s, railroads across the country were under heavy assault from bandits, Mm. the kinds of high-risk, high-reward heists that would come to be popularized in Hollywood movies of the 19-teens and 1920s. And in order to combat this scourge, railroad lines were heavily policed by a private army of detectives and guards. Mm. So basically, anytime you would hop on a train, there'd be like five, six guys with guns just kind of waiting for you to rob the train because this it, was so frequent. Maybe it's not like indicative of the time or maybe my sense of time. I'm just imagining like, you know, like a, a Pecos Bill S character, like waddling down like the aisles, just kind of spitting into a spittoon, totally. eyeballing everybody. That's, that's this time. This is really the kind of the tail end of Western expansion. Mm. Um, I believe Arizona might be the last contiguous state added to the union and at the time you know this is this is the this is the wild west this is what when most people think of the wild west what they think of what a lot of people think of about the wild west though they think of texas arizona new mexico utah colorado california they think of the western states but for the first half of the 1800s alabama was very much thought of as the wild west it is it is a completely lawless place you and know. you see how much has changed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Now we have too many fucking laws, and all of them are stupid. Yeah. Uh, but at the time, it was it was as wild west as you got. So this is really the this is like the last kind of gasp of wild west Alabama here. Um, I, I know I'm new to Los Angeles, but uh, 
Western set in Alabama. Do I smell a screenplay? This is, I, I can't believe this isn't already a movie, and I desperately want to make this mm. into one because it's got so many cool elements. Uh, uh, we can do it. We're in L.A., baby. Let's do it. We'll start working on it. So, <laughs> Oh, I need a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hire Carter if you're out here. Please. So the, uh, the, public, <laughs> the public opinion of railroads and railroad owners at the time was resoundingly negative. So this is what I was talking about. You have people like uh, Leland Stanford, uh, you know, the owners of these railroad companies are just seen as these rapacious fucks mm. and most people uh you know and this is this is what would give rise obviously to to the the era of roosevelt in 1901 teddy roosevelt comes into office uh you know quite by accident after the death of mckinley but very much with the intention of you know publicly shaming these these motherfuckers but this is this mm. is like where anger towards them is boiling so this is where tom berenger is teddy roosevelt was uh this is the rough riders period yeah yeah exactly yeah so yeah it'd be the 18 1890s you'd have the spanish american war going on but also you've got um this is when jesse james really you know even though he he was dead he became kind of a folk hero during this time but anyway so i set all this up just to say like the time period you've got trains loaded with money and goods crisscrossing the country you know usually most of the companies will have heavily armed people on board and there's constantly like gunfights and people stealing shit off of trains yeah and so it's the this is the absolute height of that so winter of 1894 a train is traveling south along the louisville and nashville lines in south alabama between flomaton and mobile uh, mm -hmm. Flomaton, you might remember from our uh, Send in the Clowns episode with Robert Yasamora, where they had a, a, a rash of clown sightings in 2016. So that's the last <laughs> creepy thing that happened in Flomaton. Uh, but uh, so this train is tooting along, and uh, Brakeman, who's the guy who rides the back of the train, notices a black man with a rifle across his lap sleeping in between two of the cars. Hmm. So this is a freight train. There's not supposed to be passengers on it. And he comes up on this guy just kind of like sleeping in between the cars. He goes, hey. And he calls for help, and him and the other crewmen kind of like creep up on the guy, and then they just violently throw him off of the train. Oh, Jesus. They're like, you can't be here. Fuck you. And they just toss him off the train. And so they see the guy, uh, you know, start to roll and tumble, as you might imagine. But then suddenly he rolls into a firing position and shoots out the lantern from the brake man's hand before disappearing into the woods. Whoa. Like, just a fucking Rambo... How is that not a scene in a movie? I don't know how this isn't a movie. And I don't know how there isn't more information about this online because it's like, they, you know, I picked stuff from like the Encyclopedia of Alabama, a little bit of stuff from Wikipedia, stuff to like kind of fill in the holes left by the books. But like overall, this this seems to be sort of an unknown tale, but it's so fucking cool. Just a, That's so bad. Your first yeah. scene, you just get this shadowy figure. Nobody knows his name. Nobody knows who he is. They just know he's sleeping and he's a problem. So they throw him off and he fucking John Wicks them like just fucking does a barrel roll and shoots the lantern out of the guy's hand. And so they're like, oh, shit. And the train goes off and they don't. He disappears into the night. You wow. know, he just disappears into the woods. So this guy uh, who is known alternately throughout history as either. Uh, here's all of his names. Uh, Morris Slater, Morris Salter, mm -hmm. uh, Wild Bill McCoy, William Brown and Will Barker. None of these might be his name. Like, we actually don't have any concrete proof of who this dude is. All we know is that he for sure existed and that he uh, had basically a year and a half run of some of the craziest crimes I've ever read about. Wow. And then, uh, and that history would know him as Railroad Bill. Railroad Bill. Which, you can't beat, that. just what a fucking name, man. Uh, I mean, like, he's he, he pretty much, like, cornered the market on uh, railroad robberies if, if if you're known as Railroad Bill, you know? Yeah, well, that was what the, that was actually what Ellen and uh, Railroad started referring to him as. They're actually the ones, like so many of the best names for criminals, it's the cops or the people chasing them that come up with the name, you know, and then uh -huh. they just roll with it. Uh, <laughs> so they were the ones calling Railroad well, Bill. Well, if it ain't another case of being robbed by an old railroad bill. Yeah. And then, <laughs> right into the spittoon. Right into the spittoon. His true name, uh, location of his birth, and details of his family have been debated since his criminal career uh, ended in 1896. What is known is that at some point, according to the Montgomery Advertiser from the time, he traveled with a circus and he learned showmanship, including sleight of hand and contortion. Uh, On top of marksmanship. 
Yeah, and apparently also on top of uh, his amazing shot on top of all of this. Jeez. So the contortion thing is interesting because in a lot of descriptions of him, everybody described him. He's five foot six, so he's not crazy tall. He's mm -hmm. uh, an average height uh, for a man of his time, really. But everybody talks about his. He was double jointed. And so his neck was like very long and he could like kind of move in like a very, he just moved in a strange way. Uh, everybody talked about that. And it's from the circus, apparently. Like, I don't know if he trained himself to, to be a contortionist or if he just was naturally like that. But that's, uh, that's one thing that they talk about sure. with this guy. So uh, he Take joined. A card, any card, and then it's just a gun pointed at you being like, give me your money. <laughs> right, right. Well, and apparently, like throughout his career, he was known to just like come up to kids and be like, hey, pull a quarter from out under their ear and like he just like does magic tricks with them and shit i'm like this guy fucking rules <laughs> um, hey, thanks mister yeah and then he just murders a cop uh in their face uh <laughs> wow wow that was cool <laughs> <laughs> so uh he joins a turpentine company in south carolina so if you don't if you're listening you don't know turpentine is a mineral oil i was about to ask what the hell is turpentine it's a mineral oil it's used in it's used in painting it's used in wood treatment it's it's an mm. it's an essential oil just an industrial oil and the way you harvest it is the earliest essential oil. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And the way you harvest it is by essentially hacking into a pine tree. And as soon as you cut through the bark of a pine tree and it starts em emitting this oil mm -hmm. immediately. So there's these little baskets that just come down. So, and you still see today, if you travel in South Alabama, Northern Florida, pine trees everywhere and turpentine mm. is still harvested there it's uh it's, the history of essential oils you know you got like frankincense and then turpentine and yeah, then citrus yeah. mango and now mostly turpentine is used uh if you're uh, painting a house and you're trying to get the paint out from under your fingernails you just put some either ah. turpentine or acetone on your hands it'll dissolve it but it's I'll, a it's a dissolve that's it's a dissolving agent is what it's used I'll for. i'll get a vat of it for for the home yeah yeah um but you Basically, you get it by uh, harvesting it from pine trees. And mm. so the, the kind of swampy sort of like, you know, extreme, you've lived in Alabama for many years, as I did. Oh, hell Born yeah. and raised there. It's humid as shit. And you have to imagine like yes. southern Alabama, pine forests, just extremely humid. And you're harvesting a an oil that is... It, with prolonged exposure, sort of noxious, mm. because if you you know turpentine, it it has a very very strong smell. So people would often get nauseous harvesting the stuff, and it's just a miasma of shit. Always <laughs> great just, use of miasma. Just just working in the like working in the humidity and the smell of the turpentine, like it's it, it, it's just a nasty way of living. But it's how a lot of people made their living in that time and still mm. do today. So he's working in South Carolina, and then the firm he's with decides to move down to Baldwin County, Alabama. So that's how he gets mm -hmm. from South Carolina, where they think he's maybe from, question mark, down mm -hmm. to Southern Alabama. So, uh, yeah, contemporary reports from the men in the turpentine camps remember him as a profoundly athletic, top-notch laborer, and as an affable individual. So he's a chipper guy. He's a real nice guy, but he's also extremely athletic, as you could see by the fact that he was thrown off a fucking train and managed to do a barrel roll and shoot back at the guy, uh, Whoa. <laughs> which is incredible. Uh, so they describe him as having light skin and standing between five foot six and five foot seven. And it's after he decides to leave the turpentine company that Bill's run really commences. So the people who threw him off the train, he's just like, fuck L and N. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. for the rest of his life, it, just his whole existence is like, fuck you for throwing me off a train. Yeah, and yeah. it's like the and again back to the screenplay you thing. Or not do that. It's the perfect Coen Brothers esque motivation, just like, oh well, you know, I wasn't gonna kill you, but you threw me off a train. <laughs> like yeah. just like what a good reason for a blood vendetta. You don't need anything like oh he didn't kill his kids. He, they didn't you know do anything fucked up to his family. It's literally like you threw me off a train. <laughs> yeah, and now I'm gonna kill you. Like see like a Buster Scruggs s type of. It really is. Now partner, where I come from, that just qualifies is downright disrespect. That's just impolite. You sh you ought not be throwing people off a train. So With his kindly demeanor. <laughs> There's also uh, this other story about his origin. So it's either that he hates the railroad and there's this other story about his origin that a police officer in Birmingham asked to see his gun permit because he walked around with a rifle all the time. <laughs> he just always had a huge gun and later he would get like three more guns. So he's just like right. loaded all the fucking time with uh, with weapons and apparently a cop was just like, you have to have a permit for that. And he just started, he's like real sheepish like, hey, um, excuse me. Hi. Uh, just, just how are you? Uh, just about the uh the yeah the gun. I just I gotta ask. 
I just thought, well, you know, I just figured I'd ask. You know, I don't want to cause a I don't wanna, no, 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 no. I don't, <laughs> don't want to cause a problem. I saw you doing magic. It's very impressive. Yeah, yeah. You like did a little magic trick. Ooh, cool. But yeah, so th- those are kind of the two competing origin stories for this guy. I like the, you threw me off a train, I'm going to kill you uh, yeah. sort of thing. So That definitely has like a, a Western fable sense. Fuck yeah, it. it's so good. Mm-hmm. So uh, by January of 1895, Railroad Bill's criminal career had begun in earnest. He rounded up a gang near Baymanette, Alabama, and they began to rob the Ellen in boxcars. So one nice. member of the gang would stow away uh, just before the train left the station, and then it would start rolling down the line, and then the guy the stowaway would just start chucking shit off the boxcars and then while and then uh, uh railroad bill and his gang would ride behind and pick them up as, as the stuff came flying off uh-huh. the train like a well-oiled machine yeah exactly uh so the ellen Elm railroad employees started noticing train cars arriving with their destinations with broken seals missing contents and it was during this first flurry of activity that uh bill would wound several trainsmen uh, he commandeered a train and forced it out of the station, and he also, at some point, found time to threaten the life of Jim McKinney, Ellen and superintendent of the Mobile and Montgomery Division of the Railway. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it was just like a it's list of just things, and then on top of that, he just stuck a gun in the face of the railroad boss and was like, I'll fucking kill you! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so... This guy... Uh, not one to be trifled with. No, hell no. Uh, so all the while, the prices of canned goods and lumber along the Ellen Railroad plunged uh, throughout 1895 as stolen items began to flood the markets and the turpentine camps throughout the woods of southern Alabama and northern Florida. Nice. So shit's going missing from the trains, and then it turns up yeah. for half price at the general store. They go out back to get like the turpentine out of the back car, and like, it doesn't smell as much like shit back here as it normally does. <laughs> Why well, is that? He's not even stealing the turpentine he's stealing like canned goods cash like all the other Uh shit off the train so the trains coming south are bringing in all the goods that's what he's robbing the trains going north are the ones carrying the turpentine out of there so he's just stealing all of like like, you keep the turpentine general goods so he's stealing the big thing is like canned food uh cash and uh and just mail bags because at the time that's you know mail still a pretty hot in demand item yeah, because it's a lot of times full of cash. Sure. Know? So that's that's even more money. Um, so a persistent legend about Railroad Bill is that if police or the Ellen and security got too hot on his heels, he'd dispose of his stolen property on the doorsteps of random poor people living in the swamps and pine forests. Nice. So here's where his Robin Hood story starts. I was so, say, yeah. Th- and I, these are completely, it's one of those things where like this happened in 1895, so... You know, it's 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 conspicuous as to whether or not that aspect is true, but it has definitely made its way into the the railroad bill folklore. Mm-hmm. Like this is a thing people talk about him is that he would just like people would just wake up on Sunday morning and there would just be a giant can of you know a pile of vegetables yeah. F- and canned five foods. industrial vats of turpentine. <laughs> 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 no, they're these are all tur- these people make turpentine. They're they're not looking yeah. for more turpentine. They're, I don't know why I'm hung up on turpentine. He's, he's giving them the good stuff. Oh uh, yeah, uh, that's uh well he's it, that's. Awesome. I mean, he sounds like a pretty uh, stand-up guy. Stand up every which way, I guess. He's you know yeah. he, he can you know he's, slink in between. <laughs> yeah. So He'd stand at a, a cute ninety degree angle or something. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He can just like fold down like Cirque du Soleil like from the <laughs> from the ceiling. <laughs> so uh, March sixth, eighteen ninety five, Ellen and security forces found Railroad Bill sleeping on top of a water tower in Hurricane Bayou near Baymanet, Alabama. Before they could get the jump on him, Bill began firing at the posse before jumping from the top of the railroad tower onto a passing train. Wow. Railroad Bill made his way to the cab of the train where he took the engineer hostage, ordering him to speed up. So the posse is like, they start shooting at him, and he realizes the best way to get him to stop shooting at him, because it's the l and company men, right? They're not going to shoot their own train conductor yeah. to get into the cab, because now they're not going to shoot the cab because they don't want to hit their guy. So he's basically just in the cab, like, go, 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 go. And they <laughs> stop shooting at him because he's in the cab. But this is like the this is like the amazing part. So they stop firing, and then the train is gets like several hundred yards away. The posse watches in amazement as Railroad Bill gets off the train and then starts shooting at them again. <laughs> and the gunfight lasts until Railroad Bill ran out of ammunition and escaped into the swampland. So he sat there and emptied all all of his clips just all everything at them he could have so easily just gotten away on the train but he was like you threw me off a damn train and then he started <laughs> shooting back at him 
Seems uh, like whoever would play him in this movie adaptation, that is going to happen. Yes. Whoever yes. would play him that would get like five minutes of screen time. The stunt guy would get the majority of the screen time. Oh, my God. Like. There's so much crazy shit happening here. Uh, so the encounter was published widely in newspapers, and it led to the other enduring legend about Railroad Bill. And that is that Railroad Bill can turn into animals. <laughs> now, this this is true. <laughs> so various folktales have Bill evading capture by turning into a dog or a bird or a fox or a black lamb. According to one story, <laughs> a sheriff in Mississippi chased Railroad Bill into some bushes. The sheriff began kicking the bushes and a fox ran out. The <laughs> sheriff shot both barrels of his shotgun at the animal but missed entirely. A second after the shot, the fox turns around and begins to laugh like a human being at the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> I love it that it's like that's how the folklore goes where it's like uh, like he didn't just get away and then a random dog walked out. It no. was just like, he turned into he a turned dog! Into a fox. Oh shit, he's a fox! Oh that my was a, God. He's a, he's a, he turned to, and the fox turned into a dragonfly. Yeah. He truly is a, 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 a master of disguise. It's like, no, he got away and now you're just shooting at animals. But I just love that, like, this was the last time where a story like that could even be plausible. 1895, yeah. we're at the dawn of the 20th century. We'll be on the moon in fucking 74 in, years until and people the, are turning into foxes. Until the 1990s with the prominence of Animorphs. Oh, that's true. He could have been an Animorph. You know, I'll tell you, those books are <laughs> non-fictional. was an Animorph. <laughs> those books are non-fictional. That's why they're directed <laughs> at children because you can't lie to kids. So Ellen now has a $350 reward out for Railroad Bill. On April 6, 1895, exactly one month after Railroad Bill's escape from Hurricane Bayou, Sheriff Stewart and a posse of railroad company detectives tracked Bill to a barn just outside Bay Manette. All this is happening in Bay Manette. If you don't, I've been I've driven through Bay, N Bay Manette like one time. I had no idea it had such a storied history. Yeah, I, dude, I, the only thing I knew about Bay Manette, and I had our our, our mutual friend uh, Johnny Mose on the show, mm. uh, and he's from that area. And the one thing I know about Bay Manette is that at some point, the county seat of Baldwin County used to be Daphne. And mm -hmm. the people of Bay Manette were like, fuck that. And they marched into Daphne and uh -huh. stole the charter at, at, from their courthouse and <laughs> took it back to Bay Manette. And now the, to this day, because Daphne got cucked, the, the, <laughs> the county seat of, of Baldwin County is in Bay Manette because they just took the <laughs> charter. They're like, fuck you. Oh, man. You, you are. You are. Fuck your charter. <laughs> <laughs> it's our charter now. And they oh. built a courthouse and everything. That's the one thing I know about Baldwin County up until this. But yeah, Bay Manette is nothing. There ain't shit down there. The is one where the peaches. No, it's. No, that's it? Clanton. No, Clanton. Bay yeah. Manette, uh, if you were going to Gulf Shores. Right. Bay Manette's where you get off I-65 to go to Gulf Shores. Yeah, that's where I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. everybody who lives in Alabama probably went to Gulf Shores as a kid. At Gulf Shores, Alabama. You pass through Bay Manette. Beautiful. There's nothing there. The only thing I remember about Bay Manette growing up as a kid is you'd stop there for boiled peanuts. They had they had, oh, the, boiled yeah. pe they had the guy on the side of the road that sold the boiled peanuts and or turned, and to turned into a fox. Burled penis. Uh, yeah, burled penis. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, gotta laugh when you were in middle school. <laughs> uh, they drag him to a barn just outside Bay Manette. A firefight ensues, of course, because that's that's Railroad Bill's thing. Mm -hmm. And Railroad Bill killed Baldwin County Deputy Sheriff James H. Stewart. So now he's a cop killer. Jimmy Stewart? <laughs> he killed Jimmy Stewart. Well, well <laughs> god damn, I didn't know Railroad <laughs> Bill was going to be firing <laughs> hey, recklessly at me and shoot me in the head. I, well, I had no idea the guy could turn into a giraffe. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, now, now he's turned into a Dalmatian. Oh, my God. Oh, this is, oh and, and he's, he's contorting himself. Oh. <laughs> I just, uh, when I look up at him, I think to myself, oh, maybe we should just let him go, you know? <laughs> so, it's like kind of a pensive Jimmy Stewart for you. <laughs> so he kills Jimmy Stewart, and now the reward is up to $500. Now they're done fucking around. Yeah, five, so, five, five, which in today's time is like, you know, $600. It's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Escambia County, Alabama Sheriff Ed McMillan vows to capture or kill Railroad <laughs> Bill. Said Ed McMahon. It's like Jimmy Stewart and Ed, Ed Yeah, they're on the case. <laughs> yes, yeah. there he is. <laughs> so, the, the sheriff is like, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. Yeah. At this point, Railroad Bill writes a letter to the newspaper mm -hmm. that says, I wish you hadn't made that statement because I love you, Mr. Ed, and I don't want to kill you. Wow, that's, so now that's he's ice cold. Taunting the cops. He's like, I wish you hadn't said you were going to kill me because you motherfuckers threw me off a train and I'm going to kill you now. Oof. Uh, on July 3rd, 1895, 
Ed, uh, McMillan and the posse were sneaking up on Railroad Bill's hideout uh, when suddenly they were caught unawares by Railroad Bill and he shot the sheriff directly into the heart before escaping into the woods. Wow. So now he's killed a cop and the sheriff. In the heart, too. Like, shot him straight up in the chest. Like, just, like he liked him, but it's like, you know. I love you, Mr. Ed, but those motherfuckers threw me off a train. Uh, <laughs> don't ever forget. <laughs> but have you ever shot a cop? It's the terrible Mr. Ed. <laughs> uh, so now the reward is raised to twelve fifty. One thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. I believe that is one month's rent out here in uh in California. In, in, Holly, in North Holly Weird. Yeah. North Holly Weird. So that sum was sufficient to attract bounty hunters, law enforcement officers, railroad detectives, Pinkerton agents from as far away as Chicago, Texas, and Indiana. Mm-hmm. So now just everybody like huh, twelve hundred dollars <laughs> and everyone's like Every killer in the fucking country is like, I'm getting that bounty. Every roustabout. They're all coming to Mobile. Like, they're yeah. all coming to South Alabama for this prize. And they stayed there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why it's like that down there. <laughs> that's, that's the, this is the origin story of the Redneck Riviera, actually. Uh, it's so... By August 2nd, the Montgomery Advertiser was reporting that those hunting the fugitive had become a, quote, small army loaded for bear. Oh. So now there's a fucking army of people after Railroad Bill. The cagey desperado, nevertheless, could not be found. All the while, he's robbing trains and still reportedly selling goods to impoverished people for lower prices than the local merchant shops. Unfortunately, many innocent people soon found themselves paying a heavy price for Railroad Bill's crimes. Uh, on July 16th, the Pine Belt News in Bruton, Alabama, ran a headline that says, quote, The wrong man shot for Railroad Bill's crimes. So now they're just shooting anybody. It's like, oh, yeah. are you uh, you black? You got a gun? You're going to die. Oh, boy. Yeah, That's, so th- uh... this is where the uh, the Alabamaness of the situation uh, reveals itself. That sounds like Alabama. You're like, oh, God, this is, this is no good. So people are just getting their asses kicked in the streets and shit like that because yeah. they're, people are so hungry for this fucking reward. And, and also they're racist on top of that, but also there's oh, a reward. Yeah. So, uh, Railroad Bill's trail was located in Escambia County, Alabama on July 29th, 1895, and a posse followed it into the swamplands of Murder Creek. What a place for a shootout. Which I've been Was it called Mur- that before? Uh, yes. I've been to Murder Creek. I always yeah. saw it. So when you're driving down I-65 going towards the beach, you always see the sign that says Murder Creek. And I'd said for years I wanted to stop and do an Instagram picture out there. And I finally had the foresight to do it the last time I did a show in New Orleans. Uh-huh. So I like knew it was coming up. So I pulled over and I got a sign to me. I'll put it on our Twitter. We're at the Goods Pod. But I have been to Murder Creek, but I didn't know about any of this. So they chase him into Murder Creek. It's just a big, ungodly fucking swamp right. uh, between Bruton and Castleberry. So for five days days the posse which swelled in number to nearly a hundred men uh sought the outlaws capture in one incident he exchanged shots with one of the members of the posse before escaping in another he got the drop on two posse members before escaping and in another he killed one of the bloodhounds that was chasing him and escaped (laughs) so the hundred guys can't catch this dude at all he is so fucking cagey i mean one minute he's a you know butterfly next minute he's a bullfrog the next minute you know he's (laughs) next minute he's like you know you know, when he, it's got to be like, you know, living like that, you know, you got to get, you know, traipse about from train to train. And, you know, I'm sure like his posse who he was with, you know, he's like sitting there counting the money. One minute is like a, you know, a three toed sloth. And then he's <laughs> counted again as like a garden snake. And then one of his posse members is like, you know, how, how does, you know, does this wear on you? Like, how do you feel, Bill? And he just, <laughs> it bad, it coincidentally, he had turned into a dog and he was like, rough. Rough. Oh, that was a long way to go for a rough joke, but it's. <laughs> but yeah, he's I a, appreciate it. Oh yeah. See, yeah. I just think if he does have the ability to turn into any animal, it's just funny of just like some <laughs> fucking grizzled bounty hunter from Texas just climbing around in some ungodly dismal swamp mm. down in Alabama, just roasting. And this is the middle of the summer too. Yeah. So it is gross on a level that you cannot fucking imagine. It's the summer of 1895. There's barely soap. There's certainly yeah. not baby powder for any grundles or girl. Gro- it's gross. <laughs> swamp foot, swamp Rumbly ass, grundles. fucking disgusting. And I just imagine a guy just like, you know, with his long rifle walking through the woods and stuff, just being like, oh, this fucking sucks. And just turning yeah. around and being like, hey, wait a minute. This ain't the. Hey, camels are not indigenous to here. Oh, God, it's railroad mail. <laughs> And then he just explodes into a bunch of bats. This <laughs> guy <laughs> rules. Reforms as a polar bear, and then it's like, yeah, it's like Jesus Lost. Christ, yeah, it's like Lost. The polar bear and Lost is Railroad Bill. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh fuck. Uh, so 
the summer of Bill, of course, is being printed in newspapers, and it's around this time that an African-American folk ballad emerges that mm. celebrates his exploits, titled Railroad Bill. Uh, the ballad usually has different lyrics depending on the singer, uh, but it's, it's always with a bad man theme. Uh, so Joan Baez has covered this song. I uh, just saw Andrew Bird did a version of this song. Mm. Like, there's a, a bunch of, like, contemporary artists that did it and then a bunch of people in the 20s did it so here's some sample lyrics uh railroad bill railroad bill he never worked and he never will and it's ride 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 railroad bill and then the next line railroad bill's mighty mean man he shot the light out of the poor brake man's hand Mm -hmm. and then the next line railroad bills are coming home soon killed mcmillan by the light of the moon like this is this shit and then my favorite this is just this just sounds badass railroad bill up on a hill Lighting a cigar with a ten dollar bill. Oh hell, like, yeah! This is this is fucking cool. This is like the original, you know, Bo Diddley, like you know, got yeah. a cobra snake for a necktie, got mm-hmm. a house by the roadside, made a rattlesnake hide. Who do you love? <laughs> so uh, no one saw anything of Bill after he escaped Murder Creek in July of eighteen ninety five. That is until March seventh, eighteen ninety six, when a light skinned. Five foot seven black man with a limp ambled into Tidmore and Ward's general store right around sundown in Atmore, Alabama. Mm. The man bought some cheese and some crackers and he sat on a barrel to eat them. Uh, the owner. A tasty treat. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good last meal. The owner recognized Railroad Bill. There mm. was a posse outside that had spotted him too. Atmore Constable Leonard McGowan entered the store and fired on the outlaw, fatally wounding him in the back. As he fell off the barrel, the, the owner shot him with his shotgun that he kept under the counter. Two other men then entered the store and began firing at his corpse. <laughs> Jesus. He was extremely dead. Yeah, yeah. That's this is just like people just be like, hey, I want the 1200 just yeah. unloading into this guy. Turns out they had just been unloading into a gecko. <laughs> That's what they did. Hey, hope that's is, how it'd go out. That's a, that wasn't a man. That was a Komodo dragon. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, so the body of Railroad Bill was embalmed and transported by officers to Montgomery, Alabama for sh- official identification. Officers put it on public display. Hundreds of people paid 25 cents each to see Bill. City authorities condemned the practice, and so the body was taken to Pensacola, where it was again placed on public display at a price. <laughs> Yeah, uh, morbid. Yeah, and then so like, and then literally, the government of Pensacola was like, "Yeah, this seems kind of gross." So they moved it to mm-hmm. a mobile, and they did it again. <laughs> a mobile, the uh, the home of uh, all the murderers and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So they, yeah, so they just keep moving this body around, and they keep making money off a of bill. <laughs> Brings it kind of a new meaning to the term "flogging a dead horse." You know what I mean? It really they, is. Uh, they transport it back to Pensacola on uh, March 30th, 1896, and give Bill a Christian internment in the African-American section of St. John Cemetery. The ceremony was attended by the mayor and various dignitaries of the city, which I I think just means, like, you know, it's like him, like, getting tough on crime, like him just being like, yeah, we we fucking killed this guy. I think that's why. It wasn't, like, a celebratory thing, but it was just kind of weird that, like, the mayor was there for the burial of this uh, This outlaw. Guy's a legend, so it's like, you know... I guess they got to make a whole song and dance about it. Right. Like the mayor wants to get the good, like he wants to get the railroad bill bump. Sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the grave was unmarked and it was lost until it was rediscovered in 2012 using uh, original internment records. So at that point in 2012, a headstone was placed on the grave to mark the last resting place of this American desperado. So he's buried there in Pensacola, Florida. Wow. Uh, and this is a little epilogue. On July 6th, 1957, a 15-year-old high school student named Paul McCartney attended a concert at a garden party behind St. Peter's Church in Liverpool, England. Hmm. The entertainment for I've the heard even- of Paul McCartney yeah. from Liverpool. <laughs> the entertainment of this evening was uh, provided by a local skiffle band called the Quarry Men, led by another high school student, 17-year-old John Lennon. One of the songs they played that night was Railroad Bill. Ah. Yeah. So Paul McCartney apparently saw John Lennon playing Railroad Bill. He's like, oh, I know that tune. Like, because it's a famous song, I guess. Oh, you know, he was singing a song about uh, how he was lighting up cigars with a $10 bill and, and all this shooting stuff. cops. It's pretty fucking cool. And he turned into a bunch of bats. <laughs> well, uh, we just thought, you know, we thought that he, he's a desperado. You know, he's a real. He's, uh, he's turning into, you know, to wombats and all this. <laughs> Wombats. He's turning into wombats and he's turning into, you know, to, to striped lizards and what have you. And me and Paul just thought it was a it was a, a lovely tune. We thought it was a good tune, you know. 
<laughs> oh, that's right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, so that's Railroad Bill. That was uh, that's a hell of a story. Yeah, man. Let's make a movie. Let's fucking make this movie. I'm like, telling you. I, you know, before anyone hears this, we got tonight. Let's let's yeah. let's hammer out this this screenplay. I think so. And you know what's funny? All those names that, and this is why I was kind of ambiguous in the in my wording of that last part about him getting shot all those times. Mm. All those names I read at the beginning: Wild Bill McCoy, uh, uh, you know, Morris uh, Slater. Mm-hmm. All, those are the names that various people that saw the body were like, oh, that's, I know that guy. That's Morris Slater. I used to work with him at the Turpentine camp. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, that's Bill McCoy. Like, I remember him getting a fight at my bar. So there's not even any proof that the guy they fucking killed. Is him. Is him. Like, he, they took him to Birmingham to be identified, but the fuck do they know? Yeah, right. They're there's no photo. Like, that's that. The only photo of this guy, and I'll, I'll put it on Twitter as grisly as it is, is him dead on a plank. That's it. Jesus. The, the death photo is the only photo that exists of, of Railroad Bill, and there's you know there's no there's nothing to say that he didn't uh, either die of his wounds in that swamp or got away maybe to to Texas or California or something like that. But mm-hmm. uh, it's ambiguous. Or like at the end of Jurassic Park, he turned into a bird, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the T Rex, <laughs> and flew away. So. I'd like to think that he made it out. West, you know, he made it out to yeah. California way, such as such as uh, as we both have now. And yeah, he's you know, out, he's out here somewhere. He's out here somewhere, and, and he got a job at Trader Joe's, and he found a pretty <laughs> affordable place in like Burbank or something. You know, yeah, yeah, he took that ransom money, the t- the twelve fifty, and got one month rent in Burbank. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, they, yeah, that's that's all the story, man. Jesus, I I was. Unaware of 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 this character, this this desperado railroad bill. Yeah, man, check uh, out uh, check out Alabama Scoundrels and check out the life and crimes of Railroad Bill. They they tried to kind of I, I think both of them did a pretty good job. Uh, Alabama Scoundrels is more of an overview. Mm-hmm. Life and crimes really cite contemporary newspaper articles, which those mm-hmm. those in and of themselves because at the time this guy was selling news like hotcakes. So they're just printing. Oh anything. yeah, but he's like the rock star of his day, right? So a lot of it is probably bullshit, which makes it even mm-hmm. more. Or fun to try to piece together. You're like, all right, what if this is real? You got to sell papers too. Got to sell papers, yeah. So of course he he turns, turns into mongooses. Yeah, of course he right. turns into snakes and, yeah. and and fucking birds and stuff. So anyway, uh, that's the tale of Railroad Bill. So I guess we're gonna go. Uh, yeah, we are. We're in this parking lot of uh, of a Walgreens, and now we're gonna go to Disgraceland Studios, and we'll uh, we'll link up with uh, Doctor Pat and Sam Harder, and we will talk about some more uh, contemporary. More, uh, more funny crimes. I don't know if uh, this one. It's not that it wasn't funny. It's just uh, he definitely killed a shitload of people. But boy, what a badass! Uh, so yeah, what a story. Well, but slightly, some slightly more lighthearted crimes uh, this week in the uh, Disgrace Lane Picayune, and we'll go there now. From time to time uh, here at the podcast, we we do have this newspaper that is on the most irregular schedule of any newspaper in the fucking country, Mm -hmm. but it's called the Disgraceland Picayune, and every once in a while we'll get a a brand new edition with some news stories that the news gods have deemed worth covering, and we've we've got some some doozies here Mm -hmm. uh, today. So this uh, this first story comes to us from Johns Creek, Georgia. Where the hell is that, Pat? I, I'm not quite sure where Johns Creek is, because the thing about Georgia is, is that Georgia has the second most counties in the entire country with, when it comes to a state, right? Yeah. Texas has the most, and then it's Georgia. But the thing about Georgia is Georgia's like a fraction of the size of Texas. Yeah. So you have these small, out-of-the-way kind of counties that have s- small villages in them, like you right. know, uh, Johns Creek or what have you. So you Atlanta, can live in uh, yeah. Macon. <laughs> you can live in Georgia and Macon, not Augusta. Augusta. <laughs> you could live in Georgia and have no idea that these things exist or these small towns exist. Yeah, because, Georgia you know. is, in fact, this is a good uh, bar trivia question. It is the largest state 
east of the Mississippi River. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Hmm. Johns Creek police say Friday that they are still looking for a man who robbed two businesses, including a Waffle House at gunpoint on the same day last month. And then this is this is the fun part. Surveillance footage from February 21st shows a man in a bathrobe pointing a gun at an employee at the Jones Bridge Waffle House and demanding money, according to a Channel 2 Action News. So a guy robbed a Waffle House in a bathrobe. Cool. <laughs> Not the place you would think has a ton of cash on hand. Right, right. Well, right. also, you dress for the job you want. Yeah. yeah. And you in know? his case, it's the dude from the big <laughs> house. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It seems very dude-ish. Yeah. Just, just stroll into the damn Waffle House <laughs> with a gun <laughs> and a bathrobe. <laughs> this is outstanding. You basically are a fan of something and you live it. You know, there's probably been people that have had engaged in armed robbery and kiss makeup, you <laughs> know, or, or a uh, Star Trek outfit. <laughs> this is the quote from one of the workers. A man just came in with a very large gun and took all the money and threatened our lives. He told me if I moved, he would blow me up. <laughs> so, Dude, Waffle Houses. I, that's, that for some the, reason, every story in the Disgraceland Picky and involves a damn Waffle House, uh, it, seemingly. But uh, It is the shooting capital of the Southeast. Uh, well, and not just that. I mean, several years ago, we covered one of the most incredible Waffle House stories, which is that a Waffle House was robbed uh, by a man with a pitchfork. Uh, so, Whoa. you know. It takes all kinds there. It's it's, <laughs> it's really it's really a beautiful place. So, uh, I guess what we're saying is we're looking for a man in a bathrobe, uh, armed and dangerous, uh, yeah. down there in the Waffle House. Pockets of the bathrobe filled with butter packets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's the level of like undressedness that you guys are willing to appear in in public? Have you done a bathrobe? Because I no. I uh, no sh- no yeah. No. J- yeah? No, nope. I, I haven't done. Nobody's yeah, done yeah. this. That would be I like lied. going out in your underwear, basically. Yeah, mm-hmm. you like you would have to have something on un- underneath, or you would expose yourself <laughs> at some point. <laughs> yeah. Well, I assume he he maybe had some basketball shorts or something like that. But yeah, tied it up maybe. Yeah, yeah. I regularly will go out with just the house slippers, the basketball shorts, and like you know cut off like t-shirt yeah that's, yeah, that's normal that's yeah. acceptable yeah. yeah but uh i've never added a bathrobe to the equation i guess it's uh that's when i was in college bad. there was this uh guy named walt who definitely went heavy into the bathrobe thing i think it was a great Le- uh, the big lebowski sort of uh homage <laughs> yeah but he would wear the bathrobe everywhere and yeah. it would just be like he'd be wearing a full outfit but for some reason he'd be wearing some bathrobe it's like, come on, Walt. Come <laughs> yeah, on, dude. get your shit together, Walt. Although in the new episode, in the new season of Queer Eye, uh, Anthony has gone heavy into the world of bathrobes and kimonos mm. and uh, karate <laughs> gi tops. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sh- he like shelved the uh, you know band shirts and ba- like shirts for like the Strokes or the National or something like that. He's like, you know what? I'm done with this sort of uh, pre dad rock, you know, r- <laughs> rock and roll t shirts. I'm going full into you know. The robes in karate gi direction. <laughs> Flashing his fashion forward. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I uh, read a story in this uh, magazine, newspaper, uh-huh. Yeah, that uh, a guy robbed a dry cleaner with his face painted like the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Sting? <laughs> Uh, and he got away, but he got busted a month later because uh, somebody called the cops after recognizing him. He was just driving his car around with his face painted like the Joker. <laughs> so wait, was it, was it the Joker from the Hooters on Hollywood Boulevard? <laughs> no, it was. this was in Texas. Oh, okay. This is just some oh, uh, outstanding. crazy guy who thought... <laughs> who likes to dress as the Joker, I guess. You know, right. and if Rob Dry yeah. Cleaners. But he should have taken a lesson from Jack Nicholson's Joker and painted painted his face like a normal man to rob the thing and yeah. then and then sweat the man color off. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Everybody has their Joker they like. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a Jared yeah. Leto guy myself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're the one. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, the only one. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. God. <laughs> Yeah, it's There's, like I guess like cr- like crime done as with like Joker face paint on is like protesting with like the V for Vendetta mask on. Like it's yeah. just like kind of like the national uh, it's hack. Almost. It's hack. It is. It's it's a little played out. <laughs> so this is from uh, 
uh, Leicester, Leicester, Massachusetts. Uh, a Massachusetts police department said that a fingerprint left in a hunk of play doh left them to a shoplifting suspect. So, Leicester police responded to a Walmart on December 11th after an employee found several electronic anti theft devices that had been covered in uh, the malleable clay like toy in an apparent attempt to neutralize them. The <laughs> attempt to disable the spider wrap devices failed and the suspect fled. He did, however, leave fingerprint impressions on all of the play doh that he pushed into the alarms <laughs> so hey, motherfucker <laughs> i mean here's the thing about phloem you remember phloem oh phloem yeah, yeah dude it's untraceable yeah. that's that's the great thing about phloem <laughs> real criminal geniuses fuck with phloem they fuck with phloem yeah, 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 yeah yeah amateurs are all about that gack and play-doh <laughs> yeah, but we know say, better yeah, yeah gack you if you that's we that's fuck with phloem that's that's minor league stuff you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing so yeah basically there were these little little alarms that go beep 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 and this guy wanted to shut him up so he stuffed a bunch of play-doh in him but in the process left all of his fingerprints there so they immediately found him <laughs> so police charged uh dennis jackson 55 with uh, unlawful removal of an anti-theft device and police said he has a long criminal rest record and faces arrest warrants in at least two other states so that's uh that's the play-doh guy um mm. oh this is another one from uh from georgia pat uh <laughs> Fayette, Fayette County officials have confirmed reports regarding a $98,000 heist of ramen noodles. <laughs> wow. That's thinking in the long term. Yeah. Someone Did somebody just steal a tanker so, boat or something yes. like that? <laughs> someone has stolen That's like a approx truck. approximately 386,000 packs of ramen yeah, noodles. Yeah, because those things run about... <laughs> 25 cents each. Yeah, because yeah, I was, I was thinking I've had about a sinus it. infection all week. I've been going through the damn noodles. They're 25 See, cents See, back in pack. my day, they were 13 cents. Oh, shit. So oh, yeah, that's, that's, been, that's that shows California how prices. long that I've I've been since I bought ramen noodles. So <laughs> yeah, you bought it's like four times ninety eight hundred and uh, ninety eight thousand. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So ninety eight thousand uh, dollar ramen noodle heist. The incident occurred about three wholesale or retail because we can get into some big numbers <laughs> if we're going wholesale. So uh, some outlets are reporting that the investigation involves a string of robberies, including multiple car break ins and one motorcycle theft. The noodles were stolen from a trailer parked at a Chevron in Fayetteville, Georgia. And uh, there have been no updates on the heist as of Wednesday. I love that it's a heist. Yeah, <laughs> that seems like a <laughs> continent's worth of ramen noodles. That's yeah. so many noodles. Yeah, like uh, that could fit inside a trailer park. <laughs> well, it's just in a. I think it's just a tractor trailer. <laughs> but it's crazy because, like, I'm imagining like that is the one like Maru Chan or Tom Ramen trailer that uh, just goes around and takes them to every grocery store. Like, how many fucking ramen noodle packets are there in the country? Also, what as a criminal, what's the next step with it? <laughs> having all that? Smuggling them into jails yeah because yeah. Yeah. that's the only place in which ramen noodles are extremely extremely valuable i mean yeah, yeah that's yeah. like what are you gonna do bootleg ramen noodles sell them out of the trunk of your car or something like yeah. that yeah. Like, this, this does it not, doesn't necessarily work as well as tied detergent <laughs> no this does not represent long-term planning and also i don't know if i've ever told this story on the show before but it was it was one of my favorite things that happened like my early days when i moved to los angeles like uh my next door neighbors both have been on the show uh multiple times uh andrew lopez Pez and uh, Luke Jensen. Uh, one night we were over at apartment number seven, hanging out, and uh, Luke Jensen was like, "I can eat a lot of ramen noodles." <laughs> And Andrew Lopez was, was like, "What a brag!" That yeah. Is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Was this prior to him getting swole? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he was like, "Oh, I can eat a shitload of ramen noodles." And then it was like, "Well, how many can you eat?" And then it came. The number ten came up. Oh God! And Ugh. so basically, uh, I think the deal was Andrew Lopez bet Luke fifty dollars that he couldn't eat ten packets of ramen noodles. And I'm sitting there like, "You can't. You physically can't fit that much noodles in you. They swell." up they're way bigger than you think this is going to be in horribly and uh indeed they cooked 10 packs of noodles and luke made it through about a pack and a half like what you could normally and do. the scary thing about it that, is that <laughs> that's two dollars and fifty cents worth of food right, right there. now yeah. imagine yeah. ninety eight thousand dollars worth of this so <laughs> i mean what's everyone's take on like eating it and i, I haven't done this or anything but eating it dry like oh know, love it can you do that? What's the preferable way of doing that? Oh, let me tell you. Uh, I have I have a great answer for this. So there is a very delicious recipe. I'll try to get a hold of this recipe. I'll put it on the t on our Twitter uh, at the Goods Pod. We can do a uh, purple cabbage slaw, mm -hmm. and the garnish on top. You just fucking smash up a, a packet of ramen noodles dry and throw them on top, Ooh. and it's like this really good like kind of vinegary slaw. But then you have like the crunchy noodles on top. It's shit's good. No, All I right. I All like right. uh because I like to be able to like you know pull up 
all I hate like you know little little floaty bits because I eat my ramen noodles with a fork and then I drink the broth at the end. That's my move. Sure. And so, you know, I don't fuck with a spoon. So I hate the little floaty bits. So mm-hmm. I like to keep all my noodles together. So I pull that noodle pack out, put that separately, and then the little crush parts, I eat that before I start cooking them. Mm-hmm. My move was uh, I would do the dry ones, but I would get the the uh, the plastic lime full of lime juice and the uh, the, mm. the spices that they put on that, like the Thai gene yeah, the, yeah, that yeah. they put on the, on the fruit. And I used to roll with that. And then they made chili lime ramen, ramen noodles, noodles. Yeah. and... Psh- mm. To change What's the, the point game. anymore? Really, what is the point anymore? Change the fucking game, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, people do that, I guess. I don't know. I still think it's weird when people are just pounding down bags of dry ramen noodles. <laughs> yeah, I don't do yeah. it regularly, but I like those little crispies. Oh yeah, I'll eat. I'll eat some of the crispies out the bottom of the bag, but I don't know. I hate ramen noodles. I don't. Yeah. I don't dig it. If either, I eat, really. I ate a pack the other day because I was just out of food, and it <laughs> fucked up the rest of my day. Oh really? I like mm. felt sick until I ate real food after that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. I I usually would just spring the extra seventy five cents for the uh, Campbell's uh, condensed chicken noodle soup. Oh yeah, you know, that's you know definitely you get what you pay for yeah. with ramen noodles. <laughs> Unless you get the good ramen noodles, like if you go to a like a the like a Korean supermarket or a Japanese supermarket or a Chinese supermarket, they have like the special packs of the instant ramen. Oh, the, that have the like, good shit? Oh, the they good stuff. The, the stuff they don't want you to, the, the man doesn't want, want you, you to know about. about. Oh, <laughs> the red packs? Oh. <laughs> He's right. He's yeah, right. that's no. that's that's top flight. And then they can go into the different directions, like instant Udon. Oh, <laughs> Some of these, brother. Some of these you're talking about, they come with a uh, seasoning packet and a liquid packet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The oil packet. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I was messing with that towards the towards yeah, the end of the college run. I remember those. Yeah, those are those those <laughs> change the game. <laughs> Is this like similar to like the kind they have at like you know otaku or like or like those like a uh, fancy ramen places? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Topper Silver Lake ramen. Or uh-huh. shit like yeah, that. yeah. So like it, it, obviously it doesn't come with like a hard boiled a uh, soft boiled egg and a and a uh, slice of pork, but just yeah. take all that other stuff out and just leave it to the basic level. It, it's definitely worth it. So. <laughs> It's tasty. Yeah. yeah. The Marachan company, definitely. <laughs> the, it, it's insulation. Yeah. You know? Once again, yeah. I find myself on an island here, but uh, I fuck with ramen. I fuck with top, uh, Marachan all day. That's, yeah, uh, yeah. If mm-hmm. Marachan wants to sponsor this podcast, I would gladly accept. I, I'm more of a, a nice and top ramen guy if I was to yeah, actually tops, have to. Top's better. Mm. Yeah. I just like to take the flavor packets and put it on like actual chicken. You know what I mean? Just make chickeny Whoa. chicken. Ooh. Whoa. Chickety crazy. chicken. <laughs> That's what it's called. Yeah, yeah. All right, I got one here. I don't think this ended in an arrest, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, good. So this person is just loose. Yeah. Uh, at large. Um, Texas Walmart bans woman accused of drinking wine from Pringles can while riding electric cart. <laughs> oh, somebody sent us this when this yeah, first yeah. dropped. This is yeah. amazing. That's yeah. a Florida-rific story right there. I'm That's, surprised that yeah. it's in another state. This is Texas, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, That's an innovator right there. And yeah. this, this is my favorite detail of it is uh, employees said a woman had been riding and drinking and riding the cart for a couple of hours by the time <laughs> they requested police intervene around 9 a.m. <laughs> so she got there at 6, drove around for a couple hours. With a Pringles can full of wine. And I, I, she amazing. probably scouted it where she was like, okay, I don't want to go to a Walmart that actually has a police substation in it. I want one that's like... Gives me enough time to actually uh, joyride. To do yeah. my thing. I didn't know Pringles cans could, they wouldn't leak out of the Pringles That's cans. That's what I was thinking. It, yeah. It seems like it would become very soggy very quick. Yeah, <laughs> potentially. Do you rinse out the Pringles can? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. leave the sour cream and onion flavor <laughs> in there. <laughs> or, at least, or at least use the, va- the the hose attachment of the vacuum to get all the crumbs out. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, vacuum it out first, at least. I like to take those ramen flavor packets and put it on wine, too. That's good. The chicken Ooh, wine? Yeah, Ooh, chicken buddy. wine. It's, Ooh, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like chicken, cuckoo, it's like cacovan basically. Chicken, like cacovan drink cabernet. <laughs> yeah. Little Carlo Rossi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Top also, Ross. how long? Hi, I'm Ryan. I like to drink marinade. <laughs> <laughs> how long was she doing it before they realized? Oh, she's not shopping. Well, that was my. my <laughs> no, I've seen people. I've seen I did that sixth time they asked her if she could be helped. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean I've seen drunk people on those on those uh, uh, electric scooters. Mm-hmm. That's part Walmart. of the reason you grab a scooter. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, I've seen that drink plenty of times. Yeah, if you go into a Walmart at a 
at about uh, Walmart Supercenter about 2 a.m. That is a guaranteed site unless they lock mm-hmm. up the uh, mm-hmm. the electric like the hover round. Sir. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, just oh, my God, what's going on in this woman's life to be in this position? I'm going to pray yeah. for her tonight. <laughs> well, well, if she gets the cork stuck in the bottom of the Pringles can, does she get her hand stuck in the Pringles can? <laughs> 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 well, well, what I was wondering is like, because, yeah, like you said, she wasn't shopping she was just cruising yeah which mm. i actually completely relate to i think i've talked about this on the show before like if i can't like sleep i'll go to a grocery store or a walmart and just kind of wander around uh-huh. you know and just like try yeah. to find something i need yeah maybe yeah, a dvd copy of eddie or something yeah like that, you know? exactly something like, like, like oh, that. i haven't seen yeah what <laughs> uh, how does casper the friendly ghost end I don't <laughs> remember, you know just like oh well i can find out for a dollar fifty <laughs> season three of boy meets world <laughs> uh, i love topanga yeah, <laughs> but not I, really. I do. I love her. No. Topanga, please. <laughs> Everyone's first crush. respond oh. to my tweets. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just love that. Yeah, he, uh, she was she was just cruising, mm-hmm. just living her life, and then also that she's got the Pringles can, the incognito drinking, which totally reminds me. Of, did you guys have at your local head shop? Uh, you know, I, I I would love to know who's business this is where they would turn like a like a big pepsi bottle where it would separate and it would oh, have like yeah. a hidden compartment where you could put your weed yeah, yeah. In. Oh, yeah. those are standard around the country I think. right who's yeah, making dang. this first of all you know it's like a guy named buffalo <laughs> and he yeah. just like you know <laughs> lives out in the woods he's just like yeah man i turned a mellow yellow can into a thing where you can hold up to a pound of marijuana no, I, I can imagine that my you, greatest achievement if, if you ever sure. watch if you ever watch daytime talk shows and they go uh, promotional consideration paid for by the following and then they have the inventors thing where it's like the, the caveman oh, making yeah, the wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you about 20% of them are just like, listen, this is what it is. It's a head of broccoli but you can stuff weed in it. <laughs> it's a highlighter but it's a pipe. <laughs> can I get a patent? <laughs> yeah. I just want to see like the guy that still uses like stuff like, like no sir, officer, it's just a standard issue vacuum cleaner. <laughs> right. Ain't no weed in it. No sir. Like that indignant no yeah. sir. Yeah, yeah. But this, she's almost an innovator in this of of taking that concept of of hiding pot and now applying it to hidden flasks. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my favorite is there yeah. Was an episode. Did she have a lid on it? Yeah. Was she just pretending it was a normal Pringles can? And she was I, like, "This I, is going to be imagine, covert." Yeah, I yeah. just imagined her like wielding it like a cup. Yeah, right? that's what I think. <laughs> Swishing it about, my, uh, smelling it. Yeah, one of yeah. my favorite episodes of Law and Order SVU kind of is related to this, where it was the episode <laughs> where, where where it was Mulroney related to can't stop making clandestine flasks. Well, no, because it was the episode where there was the crime centered around somebody that was smuggling exotic animals, oh, okay. and in it, a uh, big boy gets eaten by a. Uh, a tiger. Wait, from Outcast? Yeah, yeah. He makes a guest appearance <laughs> as a rapper God that owns it. a tiger in a in an apartment, you know, in a loft, and he gets eaten by the tiger. But in it, uh, <laughs> they were trying to stop somebody trying to uh, smuggle a ring-tailed lemur into the country, uh, and the whole thing was it was smuggled in a basketball, and just uh, <laughs> there was this thing where Stabler's just like, Finn, watch the basketball. Finn, Weirdo with the basketball, <laughs> and the basketball is like rolling around on it. I was going to say and that's how they like. They <laughs> did did at any point its tail pop out of the basketball, and it just became a big one of those things like they have at the Cracker Barrel gift shops, where they just kind of spin around. Like yeah, it was tail. that kind of movement, but the tail didn't come out. But yeah, yeah that was that was the whole. Uh, <laughs> The, the, t- the, the peak of the episode of find, oh, it's in the basketball. But yeah, big boy game. I guess I don't know how big a lemur is. I thought they were bigger than that. Oh, they're tiny. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, they're small. They hand size. Yes. Wait, you never been to Madagascar before? <laughs> no, I, just, uh, I only ever see them on nature documentaries, yeah, and their yeah. size is always proportional to a praying mantis or whatever they're eating. You know, <laughs> so I just assumed they were kind of bigger. Uh, I got one here from Greenville, South Carolina. A 70-year-old man was waiting for his complimentary bite-sized chunks of cheese at Costco when a second senior citizen, a 72-year-old man in a Hawaiian shirt, I don't know why that detail is in there, but it makes it so much more illustrative. <laughs> yeah. it makes he it likes, it, he yeah. likes to party. <laughs> yeah. He's, a, 72, he's a parrot head. <laughs> a, se- <laughs> a 72-year-old man in a Hawaiian shirt cut ahead of him, snatched the cheese off the plate, and walked off. Shortly thereafter, the 70-year-old man was waiting for the cheeseburger sample at another 
Dan when the Hawaiian shirted man approached again. Parrot head. Still fuming about the first encounter. He's a parrot head. He's going for the cheeseburger. Still <laughs> <laughs> Heaven on earth with an onion slice. Yeah, not yeah. pretty particular, not too precise. Uh, the 70 year old told the other senior citizen that he could get in front of him because he knew he would just cut the line anyway. Angry words were exchanged, and then the Hawaiian shirted man suddenly punched the other man in the face. Oh. The 72 year old man later told officers that the other senior was quote, balling his fist and that he thought he was about to hit, so he hit him instead. The cheeseburger stand worker confirmed the 70-year-old man's account and said that the punch made a large sound and that the younger man's hat flew off his head. Uh, so, and apparently no charges have been filed, but yeah, so we got a we got a bully at the Costco in, in Greenville and he's a parrot head. Oh. <laughs> man, apparently, like, you know, shopping at these places and being over, like, <laughs> 75, I mean, it's like jail. Like, you can get punched oh. for the smallest thing. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the thing. That's what they say about Costco. Costco. You got to beat somebody up your first day there. You know, <laughs> yeah. Establish dominance. You know, just so they know who the who the head honcho is at yeah. you know Sleepy Oaks Retirement Village. Yeah. Sure, some rogue parrot head that was kicked out of the Conk Republic <laughs> <Yeah. you know? laughs> on the loose at Costco. Elderly people in general at grocery stores act like the biggest fucking cunts in the world. Oh yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> they just they think they can. They're just like, oh, look, I don't have much time on this earth. I need to skip lines. Yeah. yeah. I need this hungry man meal like <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I love what's well, the samples. Thing. Yeah, the I mean, there's there's yeah. people that are really into like samples and are very like I saw Glenn Danzig fuming over samples at a t- at a Trader Joe's. <laughs> oh my god, they weren't there. And Danzig, one of my favorite was, stories of all time. Oh, Glenn was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> he was just an- he was like kind of milling about and he was like picking up like he was right by the ice cream freezer and he was like just <laughs> angrily looking at ice cream and like leering at the the sample station just like Where, where's my where's my i want where, my white chili i want my i want my i want my burritos now yeah yeah where's my white <laughs> my, my white bean chili soup tortilla soup <laughs> fucking gl- i'm evil <laughs> <laughs> you know who i am i'm satan <laughs> i'm evil and i want my pumpkin pie yeah, he yeah. finally gets what he wants he's like yeah <laughs> If you want to eat ice cream with me. There was uh, not too long ago, last year, a m- police murder at a Trader Joe's in Silver Lake. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Devin, was it, who was it? Was it Devin Costa that was uh, in there? Somebody that was like a... a like kind of a comedian that was probably because yeah. my open mic happens down the street from there and yeah. it was happening during like we could hear the sirens yeah. chasing the guy that was by. sad man oh, that geez. story was so sad uh, if you uh, go to google for that trader joe's one of the questions happened like right after and it just says uh i'm sorry that happened when are you guys going to be open again <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> The people who shop at Trader Joe's are the fucking worst. (laughs) All right, I got another one here. Oh, Um, what do we got? Police arrested a Frisco man with a no soliciting sign after authorities said he shot a door-to-door roofing salesman who knocked on his door. (laughs) Just very serious about his sign. (laughs) Jesus, okay. I guess that one's less funny because the murder's involved. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And, st- and, 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 stand your, and probably a, and a stand your ground like defense, but yeah. Well, you said Frisco, right? Frisco, yeah. Texas, or yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, never mind. I yeah. thought this was San Francisco. I was like, oh, well, yeah. Dude, yeah he obviously is going to go to jail for that, but no, but never mind. This seems like a testament to uh, reading the room. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you really got to read the room, and if someone you know seems to be a bit of a shut in and has like eight no soliciting signs, then maybe. The pitch isn't going to work. Yeah, I think uh, I, who can blame the guy? Who can blame the shooter here? Yeah, really. I'm <laughs> sympathizing with that guy. <laughs> That's why I was always like, you know, uh, in 2010, I remember when they were doing the census. Uh, you know, like people were like, oh, yeah, I'm going to try to do a job, uh, get a job at the census and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But the thing is, like, if you have to have some sort of like uh, seniority there in order to get the good the good gig, which is like in the city, mm-hmm. you know, which is where you want to be. If you're the new fish, you got to go out in the fucking county in the middle <laughs> yeah, of like yeah. Lee yeah. County, Alabama, and like knock on doors where they're just like, hey, uh, President Obama has some questions he wants you to answer. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> end up in those counties where when you pass, you look at the the now entering blank county sign that in your mind you hear chicka chicka down 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 <laughs> oh shit <laughs> you just re- cowboy 
<laughs> this has just reminded me that uh, one year I didn't get a job at the census that I applied for. <laughs> well, there's always 2020. So. Yeah. When oh. I was when I was a kid, there was like a writing competition. And um, like I was in like fifth grade and it was put for the census and you were supposed to describe why the census is important. And uh, it was like this statewide competition in Alabama. And uh, I got like some runner up place. And what I got for it was a Romeo must die hoodie and $50. Fuck yeah. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah, pretty sweet. Hell yeah, man. What did it have the poster on it with Jet Li and Aaliyah? Oh, yeah. And nice. Like, yeah, and yeah. Like, like the soundtrack listing on the back. Nice. Whoa. I remember Jada Kiss was Where, on one yeah, of those yeah. songs. Where is that? Because you could probably get hundreds of dollars for that on Melrose Avenue now. <laughs> uh, I think it it got uh, thrown away. Oh, <laughs> that sure. stinks. It's yeah. a shame, man. Save the 50 bucks, though. Yeah. But yeah. Well, hey. But the- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, a, I, I have a friend of mine who's uh, uh, kind of super into Yanni live at the Acropolis <laughs> and I found like you know kind of like semi ironically but she grew up like in like a, a house that was a big Yanni household and I found you know that like yellow full face Razor Ramon shirt that like mm-hmm. Drake was wearing <laughs> it was like that except it was purple and had Yanni's face on it oh my god it was perhaps oh, yeah, the yeah. greatest wow. like shirt I've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> 23-year-old Texas man on jury duty ended up behind bars after police said the man showed up to a Smith County courthouse, slurring his speech and looking sluggish. Police said they found beer in a large Coca-Cola cup he had walked in with. Oh, <laughs> yes, dude. Charged him with public intox. <laughs> <laughs> Showing up to jury duty I, with a Coca-Cola cup full of beer. I, it's beats having a Pringles can full of wine, I guess. Yeah, but still. slightly. O- on the one hand, yeah, you, you maybe you shouldn't do that. But on the other hand, like jury duty sucks. Like you yeah. should, They should let you drink. Yeah, <laughs> they should let you smoke they weed and stuff. Like it's stuff. Yeah. like it's boring. You're the ones yeah. who asked me to be here. Ever uh, get yeah. to take like a cocaine break in between? The, yeah, like know. I didn't ask for this. You know, <laughs> I just wanted to vote. You know, I'm supposed to be at my job. Yeah, I. Uh, it, for those of you in the LA in Los <laughs> Angeles, and you get called into civil, yeah, for, yeah. Uh, for jury duty, this is the best way to pass the time at uh, at jury duty at civil. If you look close enough over by the magazines, they have jigsaw puzzles. Uh huh. That is the best way to pass jury duty. <laughs> is just sit there and do the jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> oh, man. Right. You'll get to meet new friends. <laughs> well, I got to pass the time. Yeah. You just, you know, it's meditative. It's, it's great. I, You'll I think about leaving the jury duty, just getting a jigsaw puzzle for the home. Yeah, Just yeah, like, and how... you aren't like thinking about jury duty. You're thinking about this wonderful snowy vista, or, <laughs> hot air balloons. It's great. <laughs> it's funny that like in Texas, maybe with like a smaller population, that seems like out of order. But like the jury duty I went to in L.A. Uh, that that would be par for the course, I think. Is just it's it's surprising everybody wasn't sort of half drunk walking into that mm-hmm. place. Oh, they, yeah, they were probably on something. They probably just didn't have the alcohol in a container with them, right? You know? yeah. yeah, so uh, generally a bad idea to walk into any government facility <laughs> while drinking. Yeah, yeah. actively yeah. drinking. Yeah, it's surrounded by police. <laughs> yeah, just drunk, telling people, "Don't talk to me. I haven't had my coffee yet." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rivers, I gotta ask: was uh, was the person guilty? Oh, so I didn't have to go all the way. So we had a, a episode we did with uh, Travis Clark uh, called Woody Woodpecker, where I talked about the whole jury duty experience. But short, uh, long story short, basically uh, everyone in LA needs fucking therapy uh, mm. because this, it, the judge on the case asking the jurors independently before they selected the the jury, the final jury, just her being like, "Hey, tell us a little bit about yourself." It was the first time ninety nine percent of those people had ever been asked, and people were just like. Oh, my life is a fucking nightmare. And then they just like <laughs> spilled their guts onto the floor. I'm like, this is why we need universal health care. Everyone should be talking to a therapist because oh, it was just free therapy for everybody. And it was eating up time because my last name uh, was L. And so I had to wait through like, you know, the, till the middle of the pool before they could get to me and I could plug my Twitter and get out of there because that's sure. how you get off the jury is if in, uh, if you're in any form of show business. 
even if the lowest rung like I am, they'll be like, get the fuck out of here. So you literally just go up there and be like, well, I'm a comic. Uh, I do nightclub humor. And if they think you have any sort of personality, they're going to be afraid that you're going to like 12 angry men, the jury into your way of thinking. So they're like, no, get him out of here. <laughs> so I literally plugged my Twitter. That's what I did. They were like, oh, uh, juror number two or potential juror number two. I was like, oh, it's uh, Rivers Langley. I'm on Twitter. It's at Rivers Langley. I'm pretty easy to find like that. And then they were like, all right, well, the state of California would like to thank and dismiss well, juror number two clearly like, you're crazy crazier than anybody we've talked to thus far <laughs> oh i was not the craziest i think the people who like were like i can't do this because uh i fucking love cops uh i always love cops i will always believe cops mm. uh, my brother's a cop my father's a cop <laughs> everyone i know is cops. my dog's a cop <laughs> yeah. and they're just like okay well see uh like so. i'd go with the opposite i'd be like i fucking hate cops <laughs> well that was my that was plan yeah. b i was yeah. i was going with the razzmatazz angle first and then i was yeah. gonna go with anti-authority i have that. i like I to have... skewer the minutiae of the everyday <laughs> <laughs> that really uh that puts you out of the running to yeah. for a traffic light case see, or mine is mine is i got the poison pill because i'm just like hi I'm a, I'm a sociologist with a PhD in sociology, Ooh. and they're just like, oh man, this guy's gonna be too much. You know? <laughs> It's like, dude, we don't know what that is, so uh, I yeah. guess you got to go. <laughs> I like to satirize the human condition. <laughs> also, I watch the Rodney King tape all the time. <laughs> I've been yeah, watching so. the Ted Bundy Netflix documentary for new bits. <laughs> Do you think I could survive the fall if I jumped out the second story window like Ted? I'm formulating bits at this very process. <laughs> I'm going to talk about this as an open mic right now. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. I'd be like, yeah, I'm, I've been coming in here seeing some funny stuff. I can't wait to hit a, hit a open mic later <laughs> yeah. and talk, talk about, about this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this be like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys will be cool with it. The jokes will be funny. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Don't you want to be famous? I'll make it funny. Don't yeah, worry. I could, I, could, I could find the funny in a contempt of court citation. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I ain't scared <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the point is, jury duty is too easy to get out yeah. of. So, oh, I yeah. had no idea. I've never been called to it, but yeah, the next time, if it ever happens, I was to say me. if you register to vote here, is as, as soon as you do. Yeah. It was funny the, when I got called in. It was right. It was like beginning of 2017, and the judge was just like, "Yeah, for some reason, there's like all these young people coming in, and uh, they just like hate this." And, and I'm like, "Yeah, it's because everybody voted last year, and so now mm -hmm. they're just on the on the roll." So I'm I'm half expecting to get another one sometime soon. I'm, uh, I'm on five years with. Uh, uh, actually, four years with no summonses yet. God damn. I am kind of afraid because I think they might be sending them to the wrong place. I have like the fear. Like, uh -huh. you, have the, you have like the. That you're on a list? That I'm on a list that, yeah. That, of a non compliance list? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That <laughs> somebody's just going to, I'm going to apply for something. They're like, do you know you have an outstanding warrant? Yeah, like, yeah like, 15 it's summonses. Like a, it's like, yeah, it's like the, the, the kind of adult equivalent, the nerdy adult equivalent of the, oh, I. Uh, I'm. I had the nightmare about missing the final. Still, right, yeah, right. Yeah, it's kind but, of that thing. <laughs> but that's also how they select Supreme Court justices. It's just you had too many, so now you have to go be a Supreme Court justice. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be nice if it worked that way. Yeah, instead of how it it's, currently yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that is a better way. <laughs> yeah. Truthfully, is like the person with the most outstanding summonses. They're like, you can't possibly make this up. You just have to go be a judge for <laughs> now. It's like okay. <laughs> Judge Duty. Yeah. Judge Duty. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like Pauly, a Polly Shore. Polly Shore. <laughs> Polly Shore. Coming soon. Um, I got one. I forgot to write down what town it happened in, but a guy, I think it was around the Houston area, got arrested because he let a rattlesnake into his neighbor's home. <laughs> I guess because he hated his neighbor. But before he did that, he bit the rattle off the rattlesnake. <laughs> Holy shit. So that it couldn't make any noise. Oh, my God. He was, I guess, trying to murder his neighbor. Yo. That huh. is psychotic. Dear yeah. Lord. Was he wearing Joker makeup? Because <laughs> that is the most twisted thing I've heard in a while. <laughs> twisted. Twisted. <laughs> oh, my God. Holy shit. Also, the balls you have to have to bite off a fucking rattle on a rattlesnake. Oh, yeah. Sure. Also, that snake's got to be 
pissed. So yeah. Yeah. he seems to have complete control of that snake. Like you know, he like you know, snake charmed him in there. Like you know, yeah, leave a trail of peanut I, butter on the way to the. That, to the sounds, that sounds in certain, in some way, more dangerous than just biting its head off. Like yeah, you know, whip back and you know, <laughs> hit your car- hit your jugular. Or yeah, like carotid artery. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Well, they don't tell you about biting the rattle off a rattlesnake. The smell, my word! Oh <laughs> it yeah, is. yeah. Oh yeah, I can't even imagine. Yeah, the smell would be the dead giveaway for the snake as soon as that you know this, his enemy walked back into his house. <laughs> <laughs> All the Texas crimes just heavily involve alcohol or violence. Yeah, in just a, like the Old West. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people just drink too much there, and it's probably second to Florida. Well, I mean, yeah, having... that's like the big thing now with the hashtag Florida Man on your birthday thing. Which, oh, in yeah. my case, it would just be a lot of illegal fireworks accidents. Yeah. Uh, and people talk about it where they're like, oh, well, it's because of the sunshine laws that people are, have access to these crazy stories in very strong detail, which is partially true, but no. I mean, the, amount, the sample size is large in and of itself. Yeah, it is. People are aware of them, but there are tons of stories of just weird folks doing weird Florida stuff that are in the mix that are not weird enough to be featured on Yahoo Weirdness or AP Oddities, uh-huh. but are just, you know, amazing. Right. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> it just happens every day. All of mine are, uh, are pretty horrifying. For July 14th, uh, Florida Man is, uh, I've got, uh, Florida Man was plotting to burn Jewish neighbors. Uh, Florida Man was uh, plotting to put semen in co-workers' water, and Florida man arrested for calling 911 nearly 100 times in a day. <laughs> how, how big of a plot is it to come in some water? <laughs> I think I, that's more of a scheme. Or, did, or just slip come into some water. Yeah. <laughs> I think I misread it. They actually did it. Yeah, accused of putting semen in oh, co-workers' no. water. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, ugh. Also, yeah. pick a different drink. That one's pretty obvious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Go with Coca Cola, maybe, or, uh, yeah. <laughs> or perhaps, Sprite, even, even, or perhaps better, wine yeah. in a Pringles can. Yeah. Just really bring, <laughs> bring it all the way back around. Um, I have a similar one to the last one you said. Okay. Uh, police arrested a man in Granbury, Texas, after authorities said he sent dozens of drunk 911 texts reporting he had been overserved and overcharged at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> What's right is right, you know. Yeah. Excuse me, I am drunk and broke, <laughs> and I'm fucking pissed. Yeah. <laughs> what can the law do for me? Come arrest <laughs> these motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, I, I see you're drunk. Okay, I'll go get my manager. We'll talk <laughs> this out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Listen <laughs> here. <laughs> Listen here. Yes, sir. I was in this Applebee's, and the poster said $3.00. 23 ounce Brutuses <laughs> during happy hour. They now, s- listen here. Every hour in my universe is happy. <laughs> so I'm getting screwed over at Applebee's. They said and I was limited to two fish bowls full of hypnotic and, and blue juice. <laughs> <laughs> also, we ordered jalapeno poppers about 50 minutes ago. Where are they at? <laughs> They've overserved me jalapeno poppers. <laughs> I now have the shits. <laughs> but just give me a damn Bud Light. Come on now. <laughs> A BLL Bud Light with Lime. Railroad bill says before I die, I'm gonna build a railroad for the bombs to ride. I'm gonna ride that bad railroad bill. All right, y'all, that is our episode for the week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Apologies for my voice. I've had a wicked sinus infection, so I've just been working through that. Hopefully, I'll be back to normal uh, in the next few weeks. But uh, yeah, so uh, apologies for that. But I hope you had fun, man. I I really enjoyed this episode. If you want to come see me do stand-up comedy, I'm going to be down south for most of the month of April doing a ton of shows. So Auburn, Alabama, coming your way on the 12th at the Coffee Cat. On the 13th, I'm hosting the Waverly Boogie Music Festival in Waverly. Alabama. Always a great time down there. On the 14th, I'm in Nashville at the Yazoo Comedy Hour with friend of the show Dr. Ben Sawyer and more. It's going to be fantastic. On the 15th, I'm at Star Bar and Sweetwater Brewery in Atlanta. I got two shows in Atlanta on the 15th. And on the 17th, Lafayette, Louisiana. I'll be in New Orleans on the 18th and then Memphis on the 19th and then back to New Orleans on the 20th. So that's going to be a really wild uh, couple of days there, zipping back and forth across the state of Mississippi, but we'll do what we can. On the 25th, I'm at the Brass Tap in Tuscaloosa. On the 26th, I'm at Fresh Ground Comics in Birmingham. Looking forward to coming back to Fresh Ground. I haven't done that show since 2013, so I'm very excited to be on that one. Uh, And then on the 30th, 
Flair Country, baby, coming your way, Charlotte, North Carolina, on the 30th. If I'm adding more dates, just check my Twitter, at Rivers Langley, and you can see all my dates and stuff like that. Uh, as long as you're uh, looking at Twitter, you should follow Sam Harder. He is at Slam Harder. That's his name with an L. And uh, you can find us on Twitter at The Goods Pod, Facebook.com slash The Goods Pod, every episode ever, YouTube.com slash The Goods Pod, adding clips all the time, y'all. So be sure to check our YouTube. Get a t shirt at Pro Wrestling Tees.com slash The Goods Pod. A big shout out to our friend Richard Eden up there in the Klondike doing the hard work at TheGoodsPod.com and the Brain Freeze Podcast Audio Network. And uh, again, congrats to uh, Richard on the second annual UConn Comedy Festival. It looked like a hell of a time, man. Pat, what should the folks do when they get to iTunes? Uh, rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend. It shows the attitude of gratitude. And if you don't have the attitude of gratitude, fuck you. See you next week. The Goods from the Woods was mixed, edited, and distributed by me, Rivers Langley. You can find the show on Twitter at The Goods Pod. Our theme song was composed by DJ Smiles. Check him out on Twitter at DJ Smiles. This was a Brain Freeze podcast. <laughs>